Namaste. So today we'll be starting the exposition of 15th Sutra of Sadhana Pada. The 15th Sutra talks about the, uh, the painful and the pleasurable experiences. The Sutra is Parinama Tapa. Parinama is the consequence, okay, the, the process of affecting or the change that we see. Okay, the change that we see is Parinama. Anything that you see as a result, which, which has some kind of change is Parinama. Tapa. Tapa is anything that is creating some kind of pain, agony, anguish. Okay, some kind of disturbance, distress in us. That is Tapa. Parinama, Tapa. Samskara. Samskara, you know, you all know what are samskaras. Samskaras are nothing but the impressions. Impressions in the mind are called as samskaras. Imprints on the mind are called as samskaras. Parinama, tapa samskara, dukhair. Dukhair means as a result of. As a result of what? As a result of the pains. The sufferings because of the pains and sufferings. Dukhair. Gunavritti. Gunavritti means the you know that prakriti has gunas. And gunas have different kinds of tendencies. Guna is not one. Guna is of different kinds. You all know that guna is sattva, rajas, and tamas. So there is a fluctuation between these three gunas. Like once we are in one guna, the other times we are in other gunas. So you see the gunas also fluctuate a lot. That is gunavritti virodhacha. They kind of oppose each other or create a conflict because of the differing tendencies of those gunas. That is gunavritti virodhacha. Dukkham eva. So suffering alone, suffering alone because of which sarvam vivekinaha, all, everything, the one who's endowed with the discernment, discerning wisdom, for that kind of a person, sarvam dukkham, everything is pain. Why? Because he said in the sutra that the, the consequences, we have seen the vipaka, right? The consequences, because of those consequences, there is some kind of tapa. And because of the samskaras and the samskara dukkha, gunavritti virodha. So all these aspects, which are tapa, samskara dukkha, gunavritti virodha. So these aspects all lead to suffering. The one who is having that discriminatory wisdom understands that everything, everything is a pain. Even the pleasurable aspects that one experiences and thinks that there is so much of pleasure in the world. The one who understands this wisdom, the one who can discriminate, understands that everything is pain. Everything. Okay, everything is a consequence and nothing remains forever. Everything is fleeting, fluctuating. One, because of the predominance of one guna, the other gunas are subdued or become dormant. That doesn't mean the other gunas don't exist. Everything is there. So these, I can say the fluctuating gunas and the consequences of what one has done, the samskaras that are left in the mind, the impressions that are left in the mind, all these are the, the uh, uh, lead to the pain that we experience. And the one who has that viveka, the discriminatory knowledge, the wisdom, understands that these are all causing pain and nothing but pain. Okay. So to sum it up, the one who has gained the discriminatory wisdom or the discriminating wisdom, the one who has gained the discriminating wisdom, Viveka. Everything for that person is pain. Okay. Everything is pain for that person. So he says it is pain because of the following reasons. He gave four reasons here. Why 
why he is given parinama tapa samskara dukkha gunavritti viroda these are the four reasons that he says which cause pain and i know sarvam dukkham so everything is pain because of those four reasons those four reasons described in the sutra are parinama which are the consequences and effects that we see tapa the anguish and the torment that we undergo samskara the continuous forming of the impressions in our head our head is never free of anything right we are continuously experience we are experiencing something and something is getting stored in the head and that creates an impression which lasts right this this thing is going on this thing is never stopping and gunavritti virodha and we all know that gunas are of different tendencies they have different nature and attributes right sattva is illuminous which gives pleasantness and kind of happiness rajas gives a lot of momentum it it gives a lot of anger right it gives a lot of um i can say the tendency of selfishness and tamas is kind of inertia stasis like one doesn't like to move one is totally ignorant and likes to cause pain to the others we all know that gunas carry their own nature and because these three gunas are existing in everything even a human and a non human also that which is animate and inanimate also living beings non living beings everything has gunas the interplay of these gunas these are always changing when these gunas are changing there is a conflict between the gunas itself and the conflict because of that inherent conflict always experienced among the gunas one gets into pain okay one gets into pain when you observe your own behavior and the tendency of your mind you yourself will understand once you are uh, like very elated happy you you feel very good some other time you don't feel so good right you feel you are in a distress you are in a very painful situation you are thrown into some point which you don't like right and at other times you are completely out of the whole scene one second uh, i have to pick this call i'll just put myself on mute just take the call and then get back just give me one minute Okay. yeah so <clears throat> we were at the point where we were discussing that the uh, gunas have their own influence and they are not staying in one state they keep sh sh shuffling and there is a conflict you see the tendencies of satvarajas tamas are so opposing right 
Sattva has a different tendency, Rajas has a very different tendency, Tamas has another very different tendency. So when there is uh, the uh, fluctuation between these gunas, it creates a lot of conflict inside. We are not happy with our own self at times because sometimes we behave so well and we feel so good. Sometimes our own behavior is never under our control. And we don't know why this happens. Right? We attribute that to various things and we make a safe exit, giving a kind of excuse to our own self. But when we understand the deeper aspect of it, it is the play of the gunas. Right? Because of gunavritti virodha. That is why we keep changing our behavior. Okay, so the important aspect in the sutra is 2.15, second uh, pada, 15th sutra. There are four aspects. What are the four aspects? Parinama, tapa, samskara, gunavritti, virodha. These are the four reasons because of which there is pain and pleasure that one experiences. For the one who understands this, that person is called viveki. Okay, vivekina, huh? those who can understand that everything is pain, all is pain. And the pain is caused through parinama, consequences, tapa, anguish, samskara, which is the continuous flow of impressions in our head. And gunavritti virodha, because of the conflict of the gunas. These are the four reasons because of which pain is caused. And the one who is having this discerning wisdom can understand that all is pain, everything is pain. Because everything is born out of these things only. Clear? Please respond. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So we have seen in the previous sutra that it was uh, related with ahlada, tapa, then punya, punya, right? So that is also uh, telling us about pain and pleasure and because of apunya and punya. Now they're going deeper into the aspect and saying that the one, you should not harp on the uh, consequences of punya, uh, um, the aspects which are of punya, because the consequences are pleasant. So that aspect, they're trying to make it very clear because one might get tempted to think that the punya uh, aspects, the, the actions which are uh, which are of punya kind, which are actions which are good, good deeds, will accrue pleasant consequences. One might always end up thinking like that, right? And is pleasure always the right thing? Does it really lead to uh, happiness all the time? Is it everlasting nitya? He is trying to answer, Sej Patanjali is trying to answer that, that is not Nitya and everything that you see is because of all of this. At times we are in the Sattva state and we experience it as a pleasure. When we are in a Rajasic mode or a Tamasic mode, the same thing might not look the same way. So never mistake anything that accrues as a consequence. Parinama, it is very dangerous. That is one of the reasons why we are always end up in pain. Tapa, so the, some, the sufferings that we undergo, the tormenting, the distress that we undergo. And the samskaras, because of the continuous impressions in the mind. We keep experiencing things and those create impressions. Those impressions are also dangerous. And gunavritti virodha, because of the opposing nature of the vrittis. All of them cause pain and the one who has this discerning wisdom understands that everything is pain. There is nothing which is really pleasant and eternal. Okay. Clear with this? Yes. 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 We'll go to the next sutra. Which is sutra number 16. This is an important sutra. The previous sutra also was very important. They might ask you questions around what are the reasons of Dukkham? Okay, what are the reasons of Dukkham? Or what is a Vivekin? 
likely to understand as the reasons of dukkha parinama tapa sanskara <coughs> guna vritti virodha these are the reasons and he understands them now coming to sutra number 16 when we know everything is dukkha a sensible person would always think of avoiding dukkha how to avoid the suffering now can we avoid suffering which has already passed we have already faced that pain we have already suffered can we avoid it no the logical answer yeah. is no does somebody have a question or was the mic open by accident no okay so the wise one understands that the dukkha has to be avoided what kind of dukkha can be avoided the dukkha which has already been experienced nobody can do anything about that that is already experienced the dukkha that one is experiencing at the moment present dukkha can we avoid that that also we can't help it because it's going on so what can actually be avoided which kind of dukkha can be avoided the dukkha or the suffering that is about to arrive that is about to arrive which is in the future that kind of pain or suffering one can actually avoid right logically practically that is the dukkha which one can avoid so they they sage patanjali is hinting that he is clear clearly saying that the pain which is coming in future you must be able to avoid it so the sutra is heyam dukham anagatam heyam is heya is that which is to be avoided which is worthy of being rejected what is worthy of being rejected dukham heyam dukham anagatam which is worthy of being rejected the pain that would arrive in the future that kind of pain can be rejected okay what is worthy of being rejected is that future suffering <laughs> so that future suffering which is yet to come or yet to arrive is supposed to be avoided is supposed to be avoided he is very clearly saying that one example that i can give you is see <clears throat> at the moment we all feel that we have a body we should take care of it but there are a few people who know that if the body is taken care in a certain way they will not end up with certain kind of in certain kind of diseases they can avoid all those diseases right but the whole bunch of others though they know that old age brings a lot of diseases old age brings a lot of distress especially physical which also leads to mental distress but they do not do anything for that they know that it will arrive sooner or later it will arrive but they don't do anything about it what sage patanjali is saying is we know that future dukkham can be avoided so do something about it the the dukkham that is going to come in the future you at least try to avoid it so the uh, example that i gave was just to understand that that which will come in future you can do something about it to avoid it okay so that is what he says something that is going to come in the future or suffering or a pain that's going to come in the future you can actually work on that and avoid it okay so the scope of um, avoidability is only for sufferings of the future it's not with regards to the suffering of the past or the sufferings of the present okay so basing on this he has given one kind of um, a fourfold path okay a four fold path he called it as heyam heya hetuhu hanam hanopayam 
okay this is a philosophical system that is given in the patanjali yog darshan especially through the uh, through the yogic aspects okay this is with regards to the rejection of pain how one can reject pain this kind of this is <clears throat> used in therapy yoga therapy very important concept which is used in yoga therapy but can be applied across all areas this is applicable to every area but generally you see the yoga therapists or the people who are working in the yoga therapy department they will have this as a uh, kind of a standard operating procedure they will always go with the standard approach hey am what is the pain or suffering that needs to be avoided what is that which needs to be avoided which kind of pain what is the hey a hey to who what is that which is causing the suffering hey to okay we understood hey a is the pain that needs to be avoided hey a is the pain that needs to be avoided hey a hey to who is the cause of that suffering or pain okay the third aspect is hana hana is nothing but the goal that we have what is the goal that we have to eliminate pain that is the goal okay hana upaya hana upaya means what are the means to attain that goal what are the means what are the means or methods through which we will attain that goal okay so heya heya hetu hu hana hana upaya okay these are the four steps the four fold method given in the patanjali yog darshan which um, actually helps in rejecting the pain or working on the pain aspect i'll repeat it once again so this aspect which i just spoke about is the philosophical system that is produced through the yoga shastra okay the philosophical system produced through yoga shastra with regards to the rejection of pain how do we reject pain we reject pain through these four steps the four steps are heyam which is pain and suffering that needs to be avoided pain and suffering that needs to be avoided is called heyam heya hetu hu heya hetu hu is the cause of the suffering what is the root cause of the suffering hana hana is the goal goal to eliminate the pain hana upaya what are the means or methods to eliminate pain they have to be listed under hana upaya we need to have a method or the means also right to eliminate pain we just can't leave it at the goal we need to also devise a framework or a proper plan to eliminate pain right so heyam heya hetuhu hana hana upaya clear with this yes ma'am yeah okay now <clears throat> the fourfold approach uh, that is very important again that is also called as chaturvyuha vada i think there is a name to this um chatur chaturvyuha vada or chaturvyuha something the, i don't remember exactly the second word but it is related to the chaturvyuha chaturvyuha vada only chaturvyuha vada yes ma'am called as chaturvyuha vada mm -hmm. chaturvyuha vada this is a very very important question in in from the net point of view so they might give what are the uh, they might miss out one thing and ask they might include something else and ask heyam dukham hanam upayam which of these is not one among one among the chaturvyuha vada what is the answer hey i said heyam dukham hanam hanam 
Dukham is not one among the Chaturvi who are there. So, oh. Heyam, he then yeah. the second one is Hetu. Hetu is the cause. Hana is the method, uh, the goal. Upaya is the method or means to attain that goal. Getting it? Clear with this? That means we have four things. Heya, Heya Hetu, Heya, Ana and Hana Upaya. Yes, that those four things are called Chatur Vyuhavad. Okay. Is this clear? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. This was one of the essay question in our MA exam also, ma'am. Mm. Yes. So very important part. Now, uh, the next sutra is about the cause of the Heya. What is the cause of the Heya? What is Heya from the last, um, the Chaturvyuha Vada? What did I say about Heya? Pain and suffering. That suffering, ma'am. Ah, suffering that needs to be avoided. Yes, ma'am. Right. So how will we avoid the suffering? We know that suffering has to be avoided. It has to be eliminated. We, we have that as the goal. Now, how is that made possible? What is causing that heya? First, we get to the cause, which is the he to who. Cause of the heya. What is the cause of the pain? Is given in the sutra. Let's see. Drashtra drishya yoho. Drashtra is the purusha. Drishya yoho. Evolutes of Prakriti that, that we see and experience. Then Purusha and evolutes of Prakriti, Samyogo, unite. Heya Hetuhu, that is the cause of the pain. Okay, cause of what is to be avoided. When the seer who is nothing but the drashta or the purusha drishya yoho drishya yoho is the evolute of prakriti which is cognizable which can be seen which can be experienced drishya yoho all the evolutes of prakriti sam yogo when the drashta and drishya yo drishya sam yogo unite heya hetuhu that's the cause of the aspect, the pain that has to be actually avoided. So these two, when they meet, that is the cause of the pain. So they have identified the cause of the pain. What is causing the pain? Got this? Yes. Yeah. So the union of Purusha and the evolutes of Prakriti will create that pain. And that is to be avoided. That is to be prevented. The union of the drashta and drashya yoho, the senses, whatever, it could be anything, the subtle, the, the gross, whatever, whatever takes place, okay, through the evolutes of prakriti, all that leads to pain. So, this is what the um, sutra says, the cause of the pain is the union of the drashta and the drashya, which needs to be avoided. Samyogo means you understood, right? Samyogo is they are coming together. Actually, why do they come together? Can you think? Why do they come together? Ma'am, because of beginningless avidya. Because of avidya. Yes, ma'am. So that's the reason why Purusha and Prakriti come together. It is because of that that the buddhi, which is the first evolute of the prakriti, gets involved in all the operations. And the purpose is what? The purpose is the purpose is dependent on Purusha's uh, experience. I mean, Purusha wants to, whatever the Purusha wants to see, the prakriti will only see that. You're getting it. Whatever the Purusha wants to see, it will keep meeting the Purusha's purpose. All these evolutes of Prakriti will work for fulfilling the purpose of the Purusha. 
Now, what is the purpose of the Purusha? Purpose of the Purusha is either Bhoga, which is the experience or the enjoyment of the material thing, Apavarga, which is liberation or Moksha. The purpose of Purusha is either Bhoga or Apavarga. So the Purusha can make use of the Prakriti either for Bhoga or for Apavarga. If he is making use, if he is experiencing Bhoga, then it leads to the spiral of the pain. Okay, it leads to suffering, pain, rebirth and all that. But when the Prakriti is used for liberation, you understand that you have to go into Prati Prasava and separate yourself from the Prakriti aspects. The Purusha has to be separated from the evolutes of Prakriti. That leads to liberation, which is called Apavarga. Okay. So, um, again, to sum up, drashti drashti yoho samyogo heya hetu. So, the cause of the pain is the union of the purusha and prakriti. Okay, that has to be avoided. Is this clear? No, no, no. How it causes pain? How it causes pain is we see that the purusha, the, the aspects of prakriti make it so blind for the purusha that whatever comes in close proximity of the buddhi becomes the favorite of the purusha and the purusha starts to experience certain things actually in reality the purusha is only the witness is only acting as a witness it doesn't have to go through anything okay the evolutes of prakriti will keep going undergoing changes Nothing happens to the Purusha. Purusha is only a witness. Okay. So whenever the evolutes of Prakriti are coming in contact with anything uh, related to the aspects of material, that those impressions are seen by the Purusha. Okay. Those experiences are stored in the Chitta. And depending on what gets stored in the Chitta, we keep accruing more and more karma share. Okay, we keep gathering more and more consequences in the karma share, and that will lead to the vipaka, which will lead to jati, ayu, bhoga. Okay, and that cycle keeps continuing, it never ends because we never are using the evolutes of prakriti in the right way to get separated because of avidya only, they both got united. But when a person utilizes the evolutes of Prakriti to, to get that discerning wisdom, Viveka, or Samyak Jnana, which is the right knowledge. If one is not using the evolutes of Prakriti for Apavarga, which is for liberation, then one gets into the spiral of Bhoga. And Bhoga, you know, leads to what? Right? It depends on the nature of that person, whether one wants to indulge in bhoga or apavarga. Now, both of them are for the purusha only. The purusha's purpose is twofold. You can understand it in that way. The purusha's pur purpose is twofold, either bhoga or apavarga. Okay. The one who wants to take the bhoga path will go into the spiral of pain. The one who will go into apavarga path, which leads to liberation and moksha. Getting it? If you look at a common person, they will always keep going into the bhoga aspect only. But then can we say that uh, uh, this uh, union of purusha and prakriti almost leads to bhoga only? Yes, union of Purusha and Prakriti leads to Bhoga. But union of Purusha and Prakriti will go into the complete Bhoga aspect when we kind of don't use the evolutes of Prakriti. After Avidya comes in, when the Purusha and Prakriti unite because of Avidya, the first evolute that gets created is Buddhi, right? Buddhi, as I told, is a Prakrit kind, right? 
so uh, starting from buddhi there are all the evolutes which gets created all those evolutes when you see when we are working up our way from the grossest evolute to the subtler ones and all the way back to the prakriti that is when we are going into the journey of apavarga liberation we are freeing ourselves from the clutches that we have made for ourselves that means uh, we need to discriminate the, the, the difference that, that means we need to go back beyond the purusha and prakriti like dividing the purusha and prakriti then it will, it will not create dukkha yes only their separation will not create dukkha okay if they are united some yoga their union is the cause of dukkha okay and what is creating that union is avidya Okay. okay. Yeah. So going to the next sutra, which is the eighteenth sutra. This is about the properties of the nature. So nature is what prakriti. So the sutra is talking about the nature of prakriti. Why is it coming to the nature of prakriti? Because this in the previous sutra they said that the union of purusha and prakriti is the cause of pain or suffering. Now <clears throat> here in the sutra they are trying to explain in a very categorical way what is the what are those attributes of prakriti? Okay. what are those attributes of prakriti <clears throat> which are so enticing okay just give me a second so the properties of prakriti which are listed in the sutra are prakasha kriya sthiti these are the three uh, attributes or characteristics of sattva rajas and tamas so sattva is of the nature of prakasha which is illuminous kriya is the nature of rajas which is activity sthiti is the nature of tamas which is inactivity okay inactivity or you can say that stupor okay you can you can call it in any way that you want status so which which is like which is heavy which can't move which can't think okay something like that is the nature of tamas which is called as sthiti this is these are the three words which are used for defining the nature of the gunas prakasha is the nature of sattva guna kriya is the nature of rajoguna sthiti is the nature of tamoguna prakasha is the nature of sattva guna kriya is the nature of rajoguna sthiti is the nature of tamoguna shilam is nothing but it's talking about their nature having a, as their nature prakasha kriya sthiti okay bhuta indriya bhuta indriyatmakam so what do they uh, what does prakriti also comprise of prakriti also comprises of the bhutas and indriyas which are an outcome of these gunas so you see the five bhutas and the how many indriyas are there the 11 the sense organs the 10 sense organs and the manas okay these are the bhutas and indriyas okay you can for now you can take the indriyas as the 10 the karma indriyas and the gnana indriyas okay and uh, bhoga apavarga now what is the uh, prakriti doing it is making the purusha either go into bhoga or the experience of apavarga which is liberation what is prakriti doing it is either leading purusha into bhoga or it is leading purusha into apavarga getting it that is the 
meaning of uh, the properties of the nature or prakriti why is prakriti created for allowing the purusha to experience to experience bhoga or apavarga go into apavarga by going into bhoga the purusha will start spiraling into the nothing happens to the purusha when i'm talking about purusha it is only the evolutes of prakriti which will see a change again i'm repeating this don't get confused purusha will never change purusha is just a witness what happens is to the evolutes of the prakriti because the purusha is the one who is the seer you remember i spoke about grahitra who is the cognizer who is the seer so the seer either goes into the experiences of the worldly enjoyments or he would go into liberation okay so whatever the evolutes of the prakriti are leading into the purusha will be navigating in those paths but here you please remember uh the do the uh, the evolutes of prakriti which are starting from buddhi until the uh, tanma the uh, mahabhutas and the gnanendriyas and karmendriyas until all those aspects the evolutes of the prakriti will undergo change will keep undergoing change with the, that change will not affect the purusha the purusha is not affected because of anything that is happening with the evolutes of prakriti but the purusha remains to be a witness a quiet witness okay all the, this is happening with the evolutes of prakriti getting it so this the sutra states the nature of prakriti and its evolutes prakash kriya sthiti are the nature or attributes of the gunas bhutendriyatmakam so when you see the sattva guna mixes with the rajas rajasik aham the ahankara the sattva ahankara mixes with rajas it leads to the creation of the 10 uh, indriyas the five karma indriyas five gnana indriyas and also the lower uh, buddhi which is the manas and when the tamasik ahankara combines with rajas we understood that it will lead to the evolution of the five tanmatras tanmatras are nothing but the subtler aspects right the shabda sparsha roopa rasa and gandha okay and those five tanmatras the subtler aspects are giving rise to the five mahabhutas which are again grosser aspects okay so the combination also is given so when this prakasha kriya sthiti shilam when when they interact and combine with various things the bhutas and the indriyas are also created it can comprises so prakriti comprises of bhuta indriya and all these aspects of prakriti will lead to either bhoga or apavarga of the purusha the meaning of these things is either lead the purusha to bhoga or to apavarga bhoga is worldly enjoyment apavarga is the state of liberation so the one who follows the yogic path understands this and chooses the apavarga the one who does not follow this path goes into bhoga okay he is making the nature of prakriti clear because we we are always given our goal where are we supposed to go where are we navigating that is why he is making it clear and clear got it <clears throat> i'm having a little bit of issue with my throat okay so we'll do the next sutra is that clear any doubts in the 18th sutra Yeah, no. Okay, so this nineteen sutra is the uh, the stages of gunas. We know that we have seen gunas. The evolutes of gunas start off from um, the buddhis alinga, the linga matra, and prakriti's alinga, 
and starting from linga matra you see there are avisheshas and below the avisheshas we saw the visheshas so all these things are nothing but the stages of the gunas when the gunas keep mutating and getting modified these are all the aspects that we come across so what is that the grossest level grossest level the grossest evolute of prakriti which is vishesha which is a marked difference like you see that you are able to understand what it is a vishesha where you can't differentiate it it is a subtler evolute of prakriti okay there are 16 visheshas for the people who have joined recently just a repetition of what we have done there are 16 visheshas six avisheshas buddhi is one which is the linga matra alingani is prakriti which is left without any mark there's nothing to identify so prakriti is the first then linga matra is buddhi avishesha is the subtler aspects which are ahankara and the five tanmatras avishesh visheshas are the 16 aspects which are the grosser aspects of prakriti the 16 aspects are five karmendriyas five jnanendriyas one manas and five pancha mahabhutas these are the 16 visheshas okay so guna parvani is that uh, guna parvani is the segments are the conditions of the gunas so what are all these segments the visheshas avisheshas linga matra and alingani these are all the segments of the gunas because of the gunas only all these things are formed okay so they are clearly giving us the segments of the gunas okay segments of the gunas guna parvani so you see these are all the different aspects which get created through the gunas vishesha are the grosser evolutes avishesha are the subtler evolutes linga matra is nothing but the intelligence or the buddhi which is which is just having a mere mark linga matra just a mere mark alingani without even that one mark okay this aspect is so subtle that it is the one without any mark that is alingani which is nothing but the synonym of prakriti prakriti is alingani guna parvani are the segments of gunas or the states of gunas vishesha avishesha linga matra alingani guna parvani clear clear with this ma'am yeah vishesha avishesha i understood linga hmm. matra alingani is buddhi and prakriti i understood but uh, what are the qualities of buddhi and prakriti you mentioned man some mark and no mark something you said i didn't a get mark that. is buddhi is sattva you remember buddhi carries a slight mark which is nothing but sattva okay and alinga is even without that sattva and what is guna parvani man can you please guna parvani are nothing but see you're seeing those different states of gunas right first we saw vishesha which are the gross aspects avishesha which are the uh, the ones which are subtler aspects linga matra the one which has only one mark which is the sattvic aspect alingani even without that one aspect the sattva is also gone so these are the different states of the gunas Ma'am, even we can say like that the uh, Vishesha is the Sattvic Ahankara and the Vishesha is uh, like that also we can say. No, no, you cannot say that. Vishesha is not uh, the attributes of Sattvic Ahankara are the uh, ten, yeah, the ten Indriyas. The Karmendriyas and the Gnanendriyas. No, Vishesha also includes the Manas and also the five Mahabhutas. Don't forget that even the Rajasic, the Tamasic side also, there is a contribution, no? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. 
from what I'm saying is just based on that, we can say that all these can be classified through gunas. Yes, yes, yes. So these are all the different states of the gunas or the segments of gunas. You see, the, the gunas are in full swing when it is, the gunas are in full swing. One second, let me just complete. The gunas are in a fully blown state when you are, when you see the visheshas, okay? And the avisheshas, when it comes to lingamatra, only the uh, sattva aspect remains because the rajas and tamas are left in the avishesha state. Okay. And when it comes to lingamatra, only sattva remains. And when it is going all the way to the prakriti, which is a linga, even that sattva is also gone. It is beyond the state of guna. So they are giving us the states of gunas here getting it yes ma'am yes so we'll do a very quick revision of the sutras that we did today starting from sutra number 15 can one of you please volunteer to explain it Ma'am, before that, I'm just wondering, Sutra 19 is all the chart that you had explained earlier, no, ma'am? Exactly, yeah. So you should have understood this very easily. Yes, ma'am. Yes. If you would have revised the portion that we did in the previous classes, this Sutra is very, very straightforward. Uh, I did draw the chart uh, thing two days before and I wrote it, ma'am. But it uh, looks like assimilation has not uh, happened. It is like taking little time, ma'am, to complicate you should come back it. To it. You should come back to it, revise it. Yes, you should see the notes that you have made. If you're not clear, go back to the recording, listen to it one more time. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, so who would like to explain without any delay because we just have two three minutes. May I do, ma'am? Hello? Yes, yes, please. Yes, ma'am. Ma Sutra 15 is saying Parinama Tapa Sanskara Dukhe Guna Prutti Pirodhacha. Parinama hmm. The change we see. Tapa, oh, you think create pain. We think create pain. Mm. Then sanskara. San sanskara is nothing but subtle aspect that is impression in mind. Mm. Then guna vritti. Three kinds of guna fluctuation in the mind. Three kinds of gunas. So these four aspects for are the main cause of pain. And yeah. who so uh, one thing, one thing, Lipalika, one thing. Parinama, Tapa, Samskara, Dukkha. So the impressions also create Dukkha, no? The impressions that we have in the mind also creates Dukkha. So you should talk, talk about Samskara, Dukkha as one, one single unit. Okay? Yes. So Parinama, one, two, Tapa, three, Samskara, Dukkha, four, Gunavritti, Virodha. Yes, yes, ma'am. These are the four reasons. They are the origin of pain, and who have this uh, got the discrimination knowledge, he can understand all these aspects. Yeah, he can understand that everything is pain, all is suffering. Sarvam dukkhamiva means everything, dukkhamiva sarvam means everything is pain, everything is leading to pain, even the pleasurable aspects also ultimately lead to pain only. That is what it is saying. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. 16. Je quick, quick. I'll do, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. So, 16 Sutra is Heyam Dukkham Anagatam. In this, hmm. Patanjali is telling us that please avoid the pain which is yet to come to you. And in a way, he's saying you can actually reject it. So, Heya means to be avoided or rejected. Dukkham, of course, is suffering. Anagata means future suffering. So, for example, like, uh, like you mentioned, if we are careful, we know what is the importance of the health and we take care of it now. 
uh, we can avoid the future physical distress or mental agony or going to the doctors hmm. yes good good yeah who wants to explain the 17 sutra quick you shouldn't take so long yes, volunteer sir. just come forward yes. <clears throat> 17 sutra is drashtar drashtar samyogo heya yeah so uh, here patanjali is explaining about uh, how to avoid the suffering so the suffering all the suffering mentioned in the above sutra is caused by the uh, meeting of purusha and prakriti Hmm. So, union of Purusha and Prakriti is the cause of Heya. Yes. Heya is, uh, and this Heya yes. has to be avoided. So, exactly. the main, uh, the reason is, uh, when Purusha uh, joins with Prakriti, either uh, Purusha can go to the Bhoga or he can go to Apavarga. If he is going through Bhoga, it leads to um, that means he is more attached to the material thing and then it leads to the cycle of rebirth uh, pain klesha suffering all those things yeah. and if he is going on the way of upper varga we can avoid all these kleshas suffering and then it will lead to liberation exactly yeah 2.18 Prakasha Kriya Stiti Shilam Pudendri Atmagam Poga Poga Pavargartham Drishyam. Here the properties of nature is being explained as uh, Prakasha Kriya and Stiti. Prakasha hmm. is the nature of Sattva, Kriya is the nature of Rajas, and Stiti is the nature of Tamas. So it is said that when Prakasha Kriya Stiti combine, they create the Pudendri Atmagam, the Hutas. Uh, which leads to bhoga and apavarga so yeah, uh, yeah. so uh, pra, uh, the pudendri atmagam the prakriti is com uh, it, it also comprises of bhutas and indriyas so uh, here purusha uh, will never change only the evolute of prakriti will change so purusha will mm -hmm. uh, navigate in path where evolute of prakriti changes and goes so yes. either it will lead the purusha to bhoga or apavarga exactly hmm. 2.19 2.19 shall i do ma'am yeah yes ma'am 2.19 is saying vishesha avishesha linga matra lingani guna parbani Vishesha 16 Vishesha are there and Avishesha 6 Vishesha 6 Avishesha are there and Linga Matra which is intelligent and Alingani is Prakuti. These are all the stages of Gunas. These four mm -hmm. are all the stages of Gunas. It may be Sattva, it may be Rajo, it may be Tamas. Mm -hmm. Anybody wants to add to the last sutra? What are Visheshas? What are Avisheshas? What is Lingamatra? What is Alingani? Vishesha, ma'am, 16 Visheshas are there. That uh, five saints are gone and five, uh, uh, five saints are gone. of action. Mandra, Pancha, Ganendriya and one Manas. And yeah. five Mahabhutas. These gross yeah. aspects are called Vishesa, 16 Vishesa. And yeah. Avishesa is five Tanmatras, tanmatras and uh, Ahankara. Yes. Avishesa. And Lingamatra is Buddhi, that is intelligent. And Alingani is Prakuti. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. So these are all the guna parvani. Are these stages of the gunas or the segments of the gunas? Okay. So should we end the class now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah.